Since Mohammed bin Salman became Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia and effectively took charge of the Saudi government, there's been a ramping up of the country's military and influence operations abroad, an escalation with regional rival Iran, and the targeting of Saudi dissidents even in exile. Agnes Kalamar, the UN Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Killings, has been investigating the assassination of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi, an assassination allegedly ordered by MBS himself. She's also co-authored a new report suggesting the Saudi crown prince hacked the cell phone of Jeff Bezos, the billionaire owner of Amazon and The Washington Post. So, is Mohammed bin Salman untouchable? Agnes Kalamar joins me now from New York. Um, thanks for coming on Upfront. Thank you. How certain are you that MBS, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, is personally to blame for the hacking of Jeff Bezos, the richest man in the world? And why would he do that? Because the Saudis say it's a silly and absurd accusation. Look, um, the, the statement that David Kay and uh, myself have uh, released uh, point to the medium to high probability chance that Mr. Bezos' phone was hacked through a WhatsApp account belonging to uh, the Crown Prince. In a uh, forensic cybersecurity term, medium to high probability is actually very high, and it is uh, very rare, if not uh, almost impossible, for any kind of forensic uh, cybersecurity investigation to reach higher um, uh, probability because of the complexity of the spywares and their capacity to, to self-destroy. So, uh, David Kerr and myself were convinced enough by the likelihood of uh, the phone having been hacked through that means to go forward and to go public as part of our mandate, which is to warn the international community when we are confronted with very probable, truthful allegations. This is why we came forward. What is your response to the claims by some technology experts who came out and said they were skeptical of the evidence that's been presented in terms of this case? Uh, it's notoriously difficult, is it not, yeah. to accurately attribute the source of cyber attacks. And this seems to be the case here, too. Alex Stamos, uh, Facebook's former chief information security officer, has said there's no smoking gun here. Absolutely, he's right. We have not, at least David Kerr and myself, have not pretended there is a smoking gun, and neither did FTI. I FTI want to... being the company that Jeff Bezos first employed to look yeah, into this uh, hack. Uh, yeah, F FTI is a company employed by Jeff Bezos and vetted by the FBI. Let's recall that the investigation of Mr. Bezos' phone is part of an ongoing FBI investigation. You've, of course, been investigating the brutal murder of the Washington Post journalist and Saudi citizen Jamal Khashoggi. Do you believe the hacking of Jeff Bezos' phone is linked to the Khashoggi killing? I believe the hacking of Jeff Bezos is linked to a targeted campaign against uh, dissidents and against anyone of strategic interest for information, communication and public relations. I am not, and I have not suggested that the, ki that the killing of Jamal Khashoggi can be traced to uh, the hacking of uh, Jeff Bezos, but it is part of, um, of a context which places the Crown Prince at the center of a campaign against dissident, a campaign which has been shown to have a direct impact on, um, on the killing of Jamal Khashoggi. And, you know, in my report regarding uh, the killing of Jamal Khashoggi, I've suggested that MBS may have ordered, he may have incited, he may have created the conditions, he may have turned a blind eye and failed to respond. What um, the current, the, the recent allegations point to us is that they are bringing the Crown Prince closer to one of those scenarios, which were identified in my report. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has had its own investigation into the death of Khashoggi, of course, and sentenced five men to death and three others to a combined 24 years in prison. Uh, you've called that a mockery of justice. Why? Well, because the people that have been sentenced both to death and to prison are basically the hitmen. They are those at the high, at the lowest level of the chain of command. It, I mean, it's unbelievable that uh, the uh, individual that had been identified as having 
um, at the minimum, plan and organize the killing. Those individuals are walking free. That includes, um, uh, for instance, Saud al Katani, that has been linked directly by the, um, by the investigator uh, to having incited at least the abduction, which is a crime, of, uh, of, uh, of Mr. Khashoggi. So the mastermind have not only been uh, inadequately investigated, and by this I mean the Crown Prince himself has not been investigated, but though that have been a little bit investigated, are now allowed to walk free. Just on, uh, on b coming back to the hacking for a moment, you did say yeah. that there was a strategic purpose for this Crown Prince to allegedly do this. We know that the Crown Prince doesn't just WhatsApp with Jeff Bezos, he WhatsApps with Jared Kushner, a senior advisor and son-in-law to the President of the United States. Does that mean that Jared Kushner could be compromised too by a Saudi hack? Look, the reason why David Kerr and myself wanted to release this statement was to send a warning to people who have been working closely with the Crown Prince and, more generally, with Saudi Arabia. It's a warning that their phone may have been compromised. That certainly includes the phone of Jared Kushner. OK. And what do you make of the West's reaction uh, to all of this behavior by MBS, whether it's the war in Yemen, whether it's the killing of Jamal Khashoggi or the hacking of Jeff Bezos? A handful of European countries stopped selling Saudi Arabia some arms for a short period. Uh, the U.S. sanctioned some Saudi nationals, they say, uh, were involved in the murder. But the president of the United States says he's a big fan of MBS. Is it fair to say that Western countries, especially the U.S., led by the U.S., have basically let the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman get away with everything? Well, um, the governments of Western countries have uh, let him walk free for the time being. I think it's fair to say that within those countries, there is far more uh, dispute as to how uh, those countries should engage with MBS. I mean, the American Congress is on record for having requested uh, from the director of national intelligence uh, a report on the responsibilities of the Crown Prince for the killing. So I think the situation in those countries is a little bit more complex uh, and, and could, in my view, turn around. This being said, you are perfectly correct. So far, uh, the governments of, uh, of the United States, of France, of the UK, have been unwilling to uh, challenge the Crown Prince for his behaviors. Uh, and by so doing, they are sending the wrong message. One final question, Agnes Kalamar. On January 3rd, the United States launched an airstrike that killed uh, General Qasem Soleimani, the commander of the Iranian Quds yeah. Force, one of the most powerful figures in Iran. Uh, President Trump claims uh, he posed an imminent threat to the US without citing a shred of evidence for that claim. Do you, as the UN Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Killings, do you do you think Soleimani was a legitimate military target, or was this an extrajudicial killing, a political assassination? Well, look, at the moment, on the basis of the evidence provided by the United States and on the basis of my interpretation of international law, I will uh, suggest that the likelihood of his killing to be unlawful is very high. This being said, uh, I am certainly open to hearing more about the evidence of the imminent threat that uh, General Soleimani represented. And in terms of international law, there are ongoing debates right now as to whether, under international humanitarian law, Mr. Soleimani was a legitimate target. Personally, I have questioned that analysis, but I do know that there are other experts that are engaging with my conclusion and are uh, reaching a different conclusions. So, um, my, my view is that uh, the killing at this point is unlawful, but let's, uh, let's I think time will tell and give us far more information. Agnes Kalamar, thanks for joining me on Upfront. Thank you very much. That's our show. Upfront will be back next week.